so this is a live surgery the cataract is grade 2 cataract ccc has been done hydro dissection has been done and nucleus is being rotated now center patient is on topical anesthesia surgery is being done by dr nidhi patwardhan using constellation echo machine with venturi settings power used uh, is uh, 100% ozil in linear so the foot switch will be controlling the power which is delivered globe is kept straight and the first trench is being made center the eye you can see that here the glow is very good so in such cases we have to be very careful about the depth of the trench and we should not rely only on the red glow but rather look at the depth which is better understandable when you are watching through the binoculars so the stereopsis is better both the instruments are at the depth and the crack is being made here nucleus is rotated now each hemi nucleus will be further divided while trenching you can notice that the tip is not being buried inside the hemi nucleus but rather partially buried so that the occlusion is avoided nucleus rotation in between also helps in loosening of the cortex so this is further continuation of the trench what is most important is the depth you can see that both the instruments are at the floor of this trench at the time of division and we don't require require very wide separation just watch the placement of the instrument and how just opens the crack after doing the trench divide the surgeon is replenishing the viscoelastic center it is important to keep the patient's eye in the center of the microscope and many times some patient tend to move their chin during the surgery now the quadrant removal will be away from you please now the first quadrant being removed the pieces seems to be pieces have to be well separated before we remove the first piece now you can see that the first piece is out the vacuum was applied at the anterior margin of the the nucleus quadrant in order to take it out of the bag <coughs> removal of first piece is very important and for that the piece has to be well separated <coughs> now the fecal probe movement has to be washed and one should avoid going in the periphery with the fecal tip sub incisal pieces should be rotated and the beginners should use viscoelastic in between steps 
so as to avoid any corneal edema. Minimal FECO energy is being used here. The FECO is in continuous OZIL mode and the power is being calibrated using the foot switch. Now this is the last piece, so we have to watch for any posterior capsule fluctuations. Here the anterior chamber appears well solid, so no need to change any parameters. That is the end of FECO and uh, next step will be cortex aspiration. We use generally the coaxial IA probe for doing that. One can also use bimanual. Coaxial has the advantage that the inflow is high, so anterior chamber is well maintained. <coughs> During cortex aspiration, one has to be careful when they are under the capsule to use lesser vacuum say around 80 to 100 and as you grab the cortex and pull it in the center you can increase it to 400 to 500 for sub it is important to rotate the probe making sure that irrigation is not withdrawn from the chamber excellent well done by the surgeon here you can see how the cortex is grabbed and then gradually the vacuum has increased. You can do capsular polish. I generally do not do extensive anterior capsular polish because uh, I feel that for the stabilization of the IOL these anterior capsular cells are important because as they fuse the anterior and posterior capsule and make it strong. Excessive anterior capsular polishing can lead to late sublux sections so this is a hydrophilic double haptic IOL this is a very standard IOL which is used and uh, this design <coughs> one has to be careful while loading so make sure that both the haptics are in the groove and they are not outside <coughs> after loading also you have to make sure that when you push the cartridge do it in multiple steps and not in a single step so this avoids catching of the haptic in between the silicon plunger and the cartridge wall so make sure you follow these steps in each case otherwise you may have trailing haptic cut which may need explantation of the IO. So the cartridge is introduced and very gradually you can see the surgeon is moving slow and also in between will release little bit so as to avoid the haptic being captured around the silicon bulb which is there and avoid pushing the silicon blue silicon tip into the anterior chamber because it kind of expands after entering and you may have difficulty in pulling it out. And to put the IOL in, just uh, push some visco and press the upper half of the IOL down so the haptic goes in the bag. So that's the end of the FECO. The next step is to do visco wash. So the visco wash is being done with very high vacuum around 650, and we have to make sure that we remove entire viscoelastic from the anterior chamber as well as from the back and that is key to having excellent post-operative outcome because the residual visco leads to inflammation, raised IOP and irritation for the patient. If you remove the viscoelastic completely, the post-operative course is very quiet and patients are very satisfied with the procedure. So here the OVD use was 2% HPMC which is least expensive
can see how the surgeon is holding the IOL up and uh, flushing the OVD behind the IOL. So we have a very clean chamber. CCC is good covering the optic. We expect good uh, predictable outcome. This is the last part of hydration. Outer parts of the incisions are hydrated. Made sure that the AC is well formed at the end of the procedure. Surgery was done on topical anesthesia. Patient is comfortable. IOL is well centered. Plexus is overlapping the IOL. And the last part will be injection of diluted moxifloxacin. We use 50% dilution. And inject around 0.1 cc of that. So that should be the last step and we just ask the patient whether the patient can see the light at the end of the procedure. <laughs>